Hi, I'm Pete, and welcome to Just a Few Acres Farm in Nebraska at the Red Power Roundup Day 2. Let's see what kind of trouble we can get into. I saw about a third of the show yesterday. I spent a lot of time talking to folks, and that was great. That's one of the two reasons I came here, red tractors and to see people. So today I'm going to try and cover the things, some of the things that I didn't see yesterday. And then tonight there's a banquet uh, where Max Armstrong speaking and it's a full day. Uh, I'll be here all day today. It just opened. It's eight, 8 in the morning. It runs until 5 and then the banquet's at 6. Shredder. Hmm. From the 1890s. McCormick number 101 combine. Number 125 combine. This is a Super C with a bean cutter on it. I haven't seen one of these in a long time. So you sweep through and cut the beans here. When I was a kid, some of the neighbor farmers grew beans and it was a complicated process as I remember they would cut the beans and then windrow them to dry them and then they would come and pick them up and run them through a combine after they dried. But soybeans are king now. Nobody grows red beans or any of those other types of beans that seemed to be popular when I was a kid for farmers. Things have changed. That sure is cool though with those big knives that run along the ground and cut the beans. Here's a mean looking truck with nice patina on it. I like them done this way. I assume that's an international made rifle that's in there. What can I say? That is just beautiful. I want to introduce you to Owen who watches the channel. Hello. <laughs> Owen, you're from Southern Wisconsin, and this is Owen's dad back here, Derek, Derek right? Yeah. Are you enjoying the show? Yeah. So much to see, isn't there? Yeah. Oh my god. What's your favorite tractor? A 450. That's a good choice. I'd like to have one of those. Do you have one? No, I really want one. Yeah, me too. We have not been in this building yet, so I'll take you in here and show you something a little bit different. Like this. Oh man, I wish I owned one of these. Or this. International cab over. This to me looks like an early Scout. It's a 65. I don't know what year they started making them, but it looks early just by the way it's put together. Oh my gosh, how can that be? Oh, I just, you know, one of these trucks. You know, something with character. I just bought a 59. International even made a van called the Metro. Okay. I didn't know that. I'm just telling you. This was made in 1950. What a nicely done pickup. Oh, yeah. 1973. This looks like a time capsule, 1973. Everything just looks correct. It's even got a CB in it. You had to have one of those in 73, right? Just looks like a good, honest old truck, doesn't it? Yep, mm-hmm, yep. Original, yep, yep, mm-hmm, huh? What's this? That radiator doesn't look right. Wait a second, what's that? It's a Cummins. What's this thing over here? It's a turbo. They must have swapped out the transmission too, so the re engine, you didn't have to rev the engine to death to get up to speed. It looks like a gentleman here was saying it's probably got a Dodge transmission and that's a six speed stick shift. Something a little bit more modern. Here's something really unique. Here's something I haven't seen before. International KB14. 1947 is the vintage. Unlike most international trucks, this has got a Cummins engine in it and they only made a little over 200 of these. This is the first one, serial number one made. And it is just pristine. That has 
Here's a travel all. Kind of like a station wagon, but a little more truck-like than most station wagons. This originally was a 1957, and it's had some modifications. Yeah, that's not original, but it sure is pretty. The amount of work that folks put into these projects, just I'm always in awe. The steps are electric. Is this your truck? Yes. Oh, nice job. It been touchy today. Wow. Did you put the chains in, Joe? Yeah, they're right okay. there. Much more comfortable seats than there was originally yeah. in it. What did the seats come out of? Out of a 94 Bonneville. Another nice touch. That blue truck was beautiful, and I was talking to the guy who built it while I was filming it, and he was saying that he built it to be a driver, not to just show. So. Principally, he drives it around to all the shows, and he drives the truck there, and then he shows the truck, and <laughs> I just can't say enough about how conscientious folks are with, you know, the way that they build those kinds of things. They, they have to be a labor of love for that to happen. In case this video is getting too boring, I gotta introduce you to these characters, and they have a leader right here. <laughs> now, they're not arranged in the, it, according to IQ, is what, <laughs> what they told me. Or height. Or height. Yeah. Good looks though, starts here, it works that way. This must come from Montana. Yeah. Yep, yep. uh, is this a Montana thing? We're, well, yeah, we're a Montana thing. Yeah, from is there everybody like you in Montana? Um, no, <laughs> we're, we're a little crazy. <laughs> so why don't you introduce yourselves? Well, this, uh, this is my son, Taylor. He's number three, uh, or four. Four. Four out of five. Four. Your own father forgets. Yes, yes. My oh my gosh. And this moving my, down? This is my youngest. Yep. This is Ben. Yep. 21 Hi ben. next week. Woo! <laughs> and this is my son, Nicholas. Nice to meet you. Nicholas. He's, he's number three. And this is my oldest boy, RC. Hi there. RC. He's a responsible well, one. I, well, <laughs> yeah, uh, I try and lead by example, but it's a bad example. I'm surprised yeah. nobody follows either. <laughs> no, no. no. Well, it was nice meeting y'all. Yeah, I hope you enjoy the show. It was really nice meeting you. Thank you. You watch your show, or I watch your show. So <laughs> but now these guys. Oh, now I'm going to start watching. Yeah. <laughs> but the Farmall A, I was very excited about these small things. They get a huge, huge uh, presentation. I'm back in this arena, and Max Armstrong and Lee Concher are talking about the next phase of the history of the farm mall. Last year they took it through, or yesterday, they took it through the F series, and now they're getting into the introduction of the A and the restyling, Raymond Lowy, and going on through 39 and into the letter series. It was a bigger launch, only at that time. At that time, the age man was so warm, it became a much bigger part of it. But when they launched this, that was Lecture's over. Look at all these people. Hey Dad, here's your tractor. Beautiful restoration. Dad was the first one to drive one of these around where we live. Neighbor farmer he worked for bought one of the first ones and Dad spent a lot of time on it. This one is better than new. It's detail. Oh, it's great. So many meticulous restorations. Everybody knows the story of the white demonstrators, right? Just in 1950, I believe, and just certain models and just selected serial numbers out of the run. Not all of them. It looks taller. I don't know why. What's it got? What's the size on there? Are they 24s? 24. That might be two, I bet That's the right. Well, uh, and those are 515s. Huh, I don't know. It's got to be the white paint. You're probably right. Yep, they just keep coming. This looks familiar. A B with a beautifully restored planter on it. It's two rows. One row on each side. Oh. And an exhaust powered lift. That is so nice. 
here's something pretty special and I'll bet you don't know what it is. Of course, this is a Super M and, and it's propane powered, but who can guess what this is? There's a planter box. We got that. And around back, we have this. It's two row, one on each side. This is one of the first, if not the first, no-till planters made all the way back in 1954 and attached to this. And it's not a farmer invention. International Harvester actually developed this technology. I came to visit Lee Clancher, who's been at the con is at the conference all three days. Yes, yes. Lee is one of the authors for covering the history of International Harvester. And how did you get into this, Lee? I was a science writer in college, and I got recruited by a local book publisher to write about tractors because I knew a lot about science, and I was a gearhead, and I got into that, and I really enjoyed it. I had been a nature photographer and taking pictures of tractors is beautiful outdoor scenery. So you do the photography yourself? Too? I, I do the photography, the writing, the whole. Not all of that. I work with collaborators, but I do all of those things. That's me. And this is Lee's publishing company, Octane Press. I, if you've been to a bookstore and looked for Farmall International, you'll find it. It's Octane Press. And it's, Octane Press is not only you, but there's you brought in other authors to publish their work. We did, we did. I, I worked in the book publishing industry for about a decade before I starting my own company. I and when I, I started it to do my work, but uh, other people approached me and said, "Hey, would you publish this?" And I'm like, "Okay." And so we, and now we have more than 200 titles in print, wow. and probably a, somewhere around 150, 200 authors. So oh my god, it grew. Uh, and it grew from, I started with this book, which I owned the rights to this, and in 2008, I put it in print this way, uh -huh. and sold it, and any of the money that came in, I put back into the company, and we just grew it organically. So it's, uh, we didn't ever take funding, we just worked and worked and worked until the company became you know, the size it is now. That is a great story. So, what's your latest? So, our newest book is The Farmall Century. This is coming out in September, and this happens to be our very special anniversary edition. Wait, is it the same tractor that's on the floor? That inside? is. That is Ryan Peters' uh, 100,000 wow. tractor. Wow. So, I photographed that. And we decided to do this treatment. That's an aluminum plate that this is printed on. This is an aluminum handmade. Oh my case. gosh! And then for tractor nuts, there's a number. Each there's only 250 of these, and they're all numbered from QC501 to QC750. Wow! Same numbering system that was used on the early tractors. So that is uh, so is cool. A, we do have a regular edition if you don't want a fancy aluminum case. So these are available at the show, and then whatever doesn't sell or these uh -huh. are available now. You can order them on our. They will ship in September as well. We okay. Have a sample people can see. This is a blank book inside. I see. And uh, there's about there's 250 available, and about half of those are gone. So we expect before the shipment arrives, they'll all be sold, which is the idea. It's a collector. You know? That's great. It's really nice to meet you, Lee. Left handed shake. <laughs> <I> really <laughs> got to hold the it. camera, you know. Really appreciate you having us on. It's great. Check out Octane Press. They're online. You know, you can order the books. And I, from experience, the photography is wonderful. The writing is wonderful. The Thank books you. are available anywhere books are sold. 544 Hydro Gas. And then we're on to Gold Demonstrators, which were in 1970. We had the 1950 Whites. And now we've got the 1970 Golds. Well, Nebraska sky. Looks like they're getting rain over there. Over here we have a lot of smaller things. Hit and miss engines, Cub Cadets. Hi, how are you? This is an old power unit. It says it's a Model 200. I'm not sure if it's the equivalent engine of an F20 or an F30. If I had to guess, I would say F30, but I'm not sure. Unique. 
Yeah. A diesel, but in a different way. Looks like it bolted in there fairly square and easy though. And here is the very rare Articulated Cub Cadet Hydro. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the buildings are closed for the day. Ooh. It's five o'clock, but there's an event tonight that I'm hanging around for that starts at six. So I'm gonna take a little break and then I'll be back with you. It's almost six o'clock, so we're gonna head in here where we're having a banquet this evening. This is the annual banquet. I think it's, that's what it's called. Anyway, they limited it to 400 and sold out in the beginning of June. I have a ticket, so I'm in here to have dinner and see the keynote. Keynote, that's from the old days. I don't know, we just have a speaker. It's Max Armstrong. This banquet is buffet dinner and we're lining up to do that and then we're gonna have some speakers. Thank you. I have been to enough. Uh, who's that guy? Max, mm -hmm. you listen to me for a minute. Okay, one more time. Before you begin your five-hour speech to our friend Nebraska, <laughs> a spy in our organization provided me with some information that this week you celebrated your 70th birthday. so much. I have to be the most naive guy. I don't have a clue what's going on around me. Ten years ago, that woman orchestrated a surprise party for me and had me delivered a fire truck. And I didn't have a clue. I was on the board of fire commissioners in the suburbs there in Chicago, and the chief called me and he said, we've got a special permission to be on Saturday afternoon. I said, well, Chief, we haven't had one in 20 years. I said, well, this is a human resources matter. <laughs> I showed up at the fire station. He said, you know, we're a little bit early. I said, well, where's the lawyer? He said, well, he, he's going to be here in a little bit. He said, meanwhile, do you want to get the engine? We've got the new Pierce, Pierce engine for Station 5. Why don't you hop up in there and take a ride? I said, do we have time? He said, well, yeah, you got the time. So I hopped in there, and the firefighter took me down and to the streets of Lyle, Illinois, which, by the way, had a great international dealership, and uh, they used to have international fire trucks. He took me down the street there in this brand new Pierce, and he said, Commissioner, won't you hit the siren? I said, oh, uh, I, you know, we're on the streets here. I don't want to hit the siren. No, oh, go ahead. Nobody will hear it. The street's wide open. We turned the corner. I hit the button. He pulled up alongside this lot where 150 people were standing. <laughs> The fire chief comes down the street with his lights flashing, siren blaring, comes up to the front end of the engine, and I knew it. <laughs> and the banquet concludes day two, Red Power Round. A long day. Got here at 7.30, and uh, it's 9 o'clock at night now. Past my bedtime. So, we'll be back at it tomorrow. I hope you enjoyed this video. And I'll see you very soon next time.